So it all kicked off in early 2016 when I had all these songs written and wanted to know where I was going. The band I was with uh, previously was uh, really wasn't going anywhere, so I decided to give a mate a call. Uh, Davey was with the Red Light Runner, so I gave him a call to to um, check out a few songs that I had written and, and see what he thought. Just so happens he picks up a guitar while we're there and we're sort of having a bit of a jam and and come up with a uh, a, a real good vibe and. Uh, so I asked him what he thought and and he said, yeah, no, there's some, some merit here. And so we decided uh, to take it to the studio. Rob had heard my latest recording at the time and asked me to come to his place to check out these songs. He's got these 10 songs, wants to do a record. Are you interested in coming and have a listen? And I went over and had a listen. And um, he played The Stranger, it was this country type song. And I'm obviously a rock guy. Um, and I just put this. So this quite simple chord progression. And yeah, it sort of started from there and then I sort of tried to slide rock pretty much into everything. So there we were ready to go to the studio and we chose to go to Jesse Wild Studios, new studio, Studio 38 in Auckland City. Uh, had all the latest gear and, and he's um, pretty accommodating and, and a good producer so, so we decided to bring all the songs in and do some guide tracks. All the guide tracks started off with just myself with a guitar and, uh, and singing as well and, um, and then from there we progressed further. I first met Rob about four or five years ago. He was playing drums for a band called The Glocks, a really cool band. And um, I did, had the pleasure to record them in my old studio, which I built uh, beside my house out in East Auckland. I think you must have heard that I was building a new studio right in the centre of the city. And uh, he came one day with his family just to have a look around and we'd just finished the studio literally like only within a few weeks. He had this idea of doing this album and um, he wanted to do it here and um, I'd worked with him once before, loved his songs that he wrote, so that um, was a really important thing. And um, yeah, it was a big leap. It was, it was one of the first projects that we actually started in this new studio. So it was, um, it was a big leap of faith for him to try a new studio. And um, you know, I, I knew, you know, I, I enjoyed working with Rob on the, on the, on the Glock stuff, so I, I knew it was gonna be fun working with him. So yeah, it was great. When Davey rocked up, we just I just started playing playing a few songs and um, and then Davey just took it from there and he he picked up his guitar and added these rocky rocky riffs to it and um, and just and Rob was always like consistently <laughs> going, oh dude, don't worry about my vocals, man. Yeah. We're gonna get a singer. Yeah. And it's all painful. It's like really cool thing about Rob with this whole journey is just being completely honest about it, and we all are. So all of these songs on this record started the same way. It was basically uh, Rob with an acoustic guitar, we had a click track, and Rob's guide vocal. And uh, Rob's not a singer. He's a great songwriter, and, and he says that he's not a singer. He was like, why do you want me to do the guide vocal? I'm like, no, you need to sing it, because we, we needed to get the, uh, an idea of what the song was gonna sound like. For me, personally, I could just hear the melodies and we had something to work with. So it wasn't like you were beating your head against a wall. You know, there was a start. So we, needed, we knew we needed to get a solid rhythm section down. And we came in here and did all the acoustic um, tracking demos to click track. Then we found the drummer, found the bass player, found the, I did the rhythm guitar, we found the lead guitarist, and just kept building and building and building and building. And the whole time we're building, Rob's going, oh my. <laughs> it was a, it's a daunting thing when you're not a singer and you've got to do all the uh, guide tracks and you and you sing it. And it was just singing, like, yeah. dude, and I was just saying to him, like, was it good? the musicians have to listen to how the melody goes. You have to sing it, bro. I mean, this is literally how it started. Acoustic guitar, a click, Rob's vocal, like that. And yeah, building up the song, building up the structure. That's what it sounds like now, you know, so we've got... Yes, there 
So you got a drum track. About our little son with this drunk, dumb, crazy bastards walking around with girls. I saw a little lady. Yeah, literally, I mean, some of the tracks, there's maybe 60, 70 instrument tracks. But yeah, it's kind of interesting to see where how it can go from a click and an acoustic guitar to uh, that huge band sound that we've got on the record. But you've got to have a vision for the song, right from you know, day one. I, I, I could sort of hear what the drums were going to do and what the other guitars were going to do. But we needed to map out the song, and that's what, what we needed Rob for, to play his acoustic guitar the way he plays his acoustic guitar, because that gives the flavor to the song. And his vocal, the way he, the way he sings that, um, you know, any, if, if we're going to use a session singer, the, uh, I still want to hear the essence of the song. So the session singer is going to listen to the essence of the song and interpret it himself. But if he hadn't had that guide from Rob, he wouldn't have known what the song was about. And I, I remember it was a bit of a struggle to get Rob to go in and sing those songs. But the record would not be the same if Rob hadn't sung first. So I managed to get hold of Carl and Angie from the Glocks and they come in and, and put some vocals in to, to the guide tracks to help out, uh, which was a huge benefit having them coming in. Davey jumped on the guitar, we did a, added a few more bits to the guide tracks before it went out to the, to the musicians and, uh, and then we started uh, looking for the musicians that we wanted uh, in the band. <laughs> Guide tracks were done, we uh, needed to find some musicians and we needed a drummer. And uh, who better than Sophie? He happened to be a friend of a friend and I gave my friend a call and said, hey, is there any chance you can get Sophie to catch up with us? To have a, to, to have a listen to the guide tracks at least and then see if he was interested in coming in and, and do, some, uh, do some drumming for us. And Sophie agreed, he, he, uh, he took the tracks away, lo and behold he comes back and he nails all 10 songs in, in a day session, but it wasn't that, it was a massive day. I've always found that the most complicated thing to record uh, of anything is drums, like, and to get a great drum sound, and we've got a really good drum sound on this record. And yeah, it takes time, and, and there was that one Tom that, that was just um, really pissing everyone off. But I'll have to say, we, we persevered at it. I had uh, Tyler here, who's an incredible engineer. I engineered pretty much most of the album uh, myself, except with the drum sessions, I had Tyler. And um, thank God he was here because we were banging that Tom for a couple of hours to make it sound right. But it's worth it, absolutely worth it. You listen to that record, those drums sound great. Uh, all right, let's just try and get that ending and that fill. So this is with Ryan. It was a massive day. It was probably like 14, yeah, 16 hours or something. 16 hours. But but we lost we lost about an hour at the beginning. He uh, we had a oh, it was a strange a gremlin strange in the floor time. Gremlin in the in the floor time. Yeah. Just couldn't get rid of it. Like just before we were ready to press the big red button, a bouncy ball decided to land in the freaking floor tom, and it took us over an hour yeah. to put tape here and tw tw tweak it here and oh my god. So I'd found my drummer, and then uh, and so which was which was amazing. And then we needed a, a, a solid bass player, someone that was going to bring some good bassy uh, licks and and be able to uh, well actually be able to listen to my voice <laughs> for a while. <laughs> while Another twelve vocals. hours. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so Davey had Carl win. He just brings quality. And that's another thing I'd have to say about all the musicians. Like there's good quality instrumentation, good quality gear, good sounds were recorded. And Carl, again, very much like that. And I mean, he's a fiend. So we had the we had the bass, we had the drums down, then we had to complete the rhythm section with 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 the right sound. And and the the key for us was getting um, getting the the right rocky sound to all the songs because a lot of the songs uh, they're not all rock. 
So there's some ballads, there's some uh, country songs, there's a pop song. I was finding a flavour that would that would that would mix all throughout the songs and, and bring the record together. Otherwise, it's it's just like a big mishmash. So Davey brought it with this uh, with the rhythm, you know, and the, and the rhythm that we did with acoustic and 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 guitar uh, brought those sounds together and and, and connected the dots basically. Yeah, it was really um, the first time I'd worked on anything that was consistently acoustic, but then consistently electric at, at the same time. So I went home and practiced all my parts and brought a bit more meat to the sandwich. So I was playing big chords through a you know, full valve Mesa Boogie amp and like we played, it was pretty loud. Putting these massive drop D chords over a classic E standard tuning, yeah. it just, just sounded huge. And all of a sudden the whole sound had gone from this to this, had this massive width to it, yeah. I thought. And um, yeah, just continued down that road and it just kept working and just it just bits of flavour that, that were added to each to each song. Yeah, you know, like I, I remember that outro and home, the the rhythm where, where we we had the lead the lead guitar goes for like three and a half minutes. It's just, it's just, it's just <laughs> full on. And old John's just on a on a on a yeah, he's just in his own little world. But then we uh, we actually cut the lead. We yeah, the rhythm was so good at the end. Remember, we, um, yeah, yeah, we took I, your rhythm yeah, and, we, and we actually cut the lead and the rhythm becomes the lead. When I first met Rob, uh, I, I just thought he was a drummer. I mean, that's all, all I'd ever seen him play. But um, he can actually play a pretty good guitar. When we started with the guide tracks, um, his, I, I, I thought his acoustic guitar playing was really good. So we ended up... I think um, once once we'd done the drums, we we re-recorded some of the acoustic guitars with Rob playing, and uh, we've kept that on the album. It's great, and he's got a really unique style. Some of the picking, acoustic guitar picking is his. Some of the strumming is his, and it just sounds good. So we we, we put Rob the drummer's guitar in there. Rob has a very simplistic songwriting style, and I don't mean that um, in a bad way at all, because the. The most simplest of melodies are arguably the best. He has quite a strong finger picking sense, so there was quite a few of the intros of the songs that had a finger picking start. So there were there were moments for myself where I found it could be a bit samey, but we worked on the structures and the arrangements and we pulled the melodies out because they were the ones that were shining brightest within the different songs. I believe he did most of the intros to the songs which gave us a lead in to how the song was going to go. And then we worked on arrangements, again focusing on the melodies, pulling the melodies out. And he wanted stronger musicians um, to make his songs come to life. He wants to record a record, and that's what he's done. John Kemp, so how do we find John Kemp? You know, he's, he, he's been in uh, LA, America for, for a number of years, 15, 20 years, and uh, he's, he's played with some of the best, best bands in the world, you know. And um, so what happens, it, it just out of pure luck, uh, my old band, the Glocks, the lead guitarist Mike, went to school with them, and John was his inspiration to learn the lead, and, and so obviously, um, so he knew John, and uh, and I was t I just happened to tell him one day that we're looking for a, a really solid lead guitar player. Some of the songs are huge; they've got massive, big, long solos. So we needed someone that just had the power. I think the first thing that happens when you're listening to songs for the first time is if. If you're front brainy, kind of like I am as a musician, you're immediately really starting to hear sort of what you might do or how you'd embellish it, you know, like if you're gonna use a certain kind of amp tone or how you can enhance it with a, with a certain part or something like that, you know. With Dreams, I think, with Dreamers, they wanted a sort of more of a um, Dire Straits type lead guitar sound. So Johnny just plays Dire Straits type sound. Yeah. It 
took a took a little bit more than what we thought because he, he was going off in tangents and and going away with all these things and these licks and these yeah it was everything was amazing but it was going to become an end it's ignite oh absolutely there was so many, but, absolutely uh, i mean we get to the one song and the the lead guitar solo i think you mentioned it before i mean it's like three and a half minutes long man I mean, you don't really get very many lead guitar solos that are three and a half minutes long. And poor Johnny A, his yeah. fingers must have been just so But he, just, sore, he was man. just so solid the whole time. And, and, and uh, just, just rocking it, eh? And it, it was just a pleasure sitting there, eh? Oh, so, absolutely. Absolute pleasure sitting there watching him just do his thing. And we're getting towards the end, you know, and it's like, okay, do I really want to bring the, the Hendrix now or yeah. whatever the... Whatever the yeah. um, and, he, and he's just like, oh, I like this. Yeah. And he's packed <laughs> out all these things. Once you've got all your rhythm down, you've got your lead guitars and everything sounding fantastic. And then we had to find, so my original thinking was, because all the songs were quite, quite different, um, my original thoughts were having three or four different singers um, singing the songs. I, I just thought that was the way it was going to work. And we brought, we, we actually did bring in a few different singers to, to try it out. Yeah, yeah. Some singers you knew, and, and they, so on and so forth. And, and they, and, the, and it was, it was sounding like it was, we were going to head that way, you know, it, it really did. But then, then. <laughs> but then, just out of sheer luck again, uh, out of sheer luck, we, um, I'm talking to Sophie after the after the drumming session and um, I said to Sophie, yeah, it'd be really good if we could find someone that had just the right flavour, it'd be hard to find someone that has a Chris Cornell, um, but a Jimmy Barnes, but you know, just... Just being able to sing, yeah, the yeah, whole, the whole uh, spectrum from a ballad to a country song to a rock song to an epic something, blah, not, blah, blah. Not thinking there's anyone out there that possibly could do all the different songs that we've, that we've got. And, um, and Sophie says, well, hey, I, I, I know someone that would be able to nail this song. So initially Rob gave me a call and asked me if I'd be interested in singing five songs on his, his project and I, I've never met Rob before. He said I'll send them through, have a listen, see what you think. He sent them through and I had a good listen to them and I really liked them. I liked the fact that they were, uh, each of, all the songs were slightly different, they had different feels and um, some were faster, some were slower and I thought that I could really bring something uh, creative to the mix uh, with the backings that have been done. And when it got to the end of five songs, I uh, got a call from Rob saying, oh, we've just been listening to the songs that um, you've just done the vocals on, and me and the boys were wondering if you'd like to do the other five songs for the album as well. To which, of course, I said, yeah, I'd love to do them. I like an album to be coherent. Like, I mean, this is a really live sounding album, even though it started as acoustic guitar and a click. Um, as soon as the drums was the next thing and then we basically threw away the acoustic guitar and the click and we recorded everything. So it's a very l live sounding record and I wanted it to be coherent and, and you got a great singer like Ants, I mean why wouldn't you use them on all 10 tracks and it just makes the whole thing stick together a lot more. I mean incredible singer, he did, did all his own harmonies and things like that. He was going to fly up and do the vocals here but we were loving the, um, the, gu the guide vocals that he sent us, sending us so much thought do it there. Recording here in Christchurch in my studio has been somewhat of a, a breeze really uh, and of course being able to just do it whenever I've got a time or whenever I had a chance um, or felt in, in a creative mode as opposed to having to go in and go right we're starting here and we're going to be finished by this time. Having no time restraints was a helpful thing to have. Next minute We've got uh, we've got ants on the album, and he, I remember sitting in the studio <laughs> with Jesse and Davey, and I was still of the opinion we we're going to have uh, three or four singers. And uh, he sends up this demo. He sends us two two demos. Yeah, there was Dreamers yeah. and um, Hold On. And just the harmonising to himself. So he's just painted this whole choral type image just by himself. It was amazing. 
It was like, just... well, I think we found our guy. Yeah. You know, I just he, he floored us. I, 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 <laughs> the faces well, of Jesse and Davey, uh, and because because yeah, I mean, we'd only been listening to ourselves for yeah for all this time on all the guide tracks, and then we get this guy who's just world class. And he comes out and he just bangs out these songs and it's just a guide track. <laughs> We're just floored. He's got the talent there, he's got the the vocal range was probably the most well, the most extensive vocal range I've heard in a guy. Yeah. The, ha the harmonies, Out the harmonies. You know? yeah, unreal. Unreal. Like a freight train. The wings are the same. So I remember on Dreamers um, when Davey was recording the rhythm, and we and we asked him to do that that front lick. We, we were always going to get John out. The dire straightsy kind of lick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we did that, um, and I said to I said to Davey, do that. To start with, and Davey goes in and he just and and Jess, we both said. Just record him, and he, he's just practicing, and, we, and we're doing. I'm ready now. And, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready." And we're like, "Nah, dude, we we just recorded it." Yeah. I've learned too many times when people are doing a sound check and practicing. Um, it's usually the best stuff happens, and as soon as we the, they say I'm ready to record, they get red light fever, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and then they can never remember the lick again. So that's, that's why so I, that's one of the reasons I pressed record while he was rehearsing, yeah. and we just lined it up, and it was. Perfect. Is there ever any reason to ever want to try? Yes, there is. Sometimes I worry about our little son. So um, the next song was Hold On, wasn't it? And um, I remember this, the, that skank guitar that uh, Johnny was doing. I just think that really locks it in. But I also think the, the picking, the, your intro picking, really locks it in. That's why we kept it in there. It was only supposed to be a guide guitar, but that's the one we're using. Yeah, I, think it, yeah. I think it was, um, it was the first song we heard Anthony sing on. Mm. Yeah. And that was the moment kind of leveled us a little bit. It was like, oh my. Oh, yeah, that's that's got some mumbo. We need to use right. them for everything. <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's exactly <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. How do you harmonise this dude? Yeah. That's that, um, that skank was always like, takes, took me right back to like a, a 50s, 60s era, like that Motown. Motown, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Motown skank, eh? Yeah. That's what I heard too. Mm. It's also one of the tracks that we, we brought in a Andrew Ishi with the with the organ and the piano. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this, it, that really suits it. The strings and the and the organ and the piano were all done in Mississippi yeah. by Andrew. Yeah. Great.
telling me you had gone I started to hesitate Not knowing what to say I think I like about this song the most is when that Cannon Crow style guitar comes in about here. And that just lifts the whole song. It just has that nice flow, nice ring to it. We bought the ukulele in just to give it that distinctive it's little pretty distinctive. ring. It's up quite loud in the mix. It's right through the whole song. But it just gives it that little flavour, eh? Right? Yeah. It makes you sort of think, what is it? That song was, was I wrote about a mate who passed away and um, and so it, it was just one of those songs that, it was funny because it took me about 15 minutes to write the song. I got the phone call from a mate that another mate had died, I was sitting there right next to my guitar, picked up my guitar, wrote the song within 15, 10 minutes and, and that was the song. And that was it. Hey, this was never part of the play. Home is this massive, epic song that just keeps going and going and going. It's a very, very long song, but I think one of the important things about um, recording, producing, is when you're listening to the songs, you don't get bored, ever. As soon as you get bored, then there's something wrong. There's not right or something. And this song, Home, I think, I don't, don't quote me on it, it's six or seven minutes long, and then you get bored. Working our fingers to the bone. It was a song that um, when I originally wrote was for the Dlocks and we played it a number of times. We had um, oh, we had some really good responses with it, but it never really had the essence of what the song was about. I think with now, where it's come to now. It's kind of like a rock opera, I see it as yeah. a big, and it builds up from this finger picking to the... It doesn't get boring at all, right? Eh? Yeah. That's one of the things I really like about the song, it's like tells seven a story. plus minutes long. And even from the first note on the keyboard, it just, you know, it gives me goosebumps. It's piano. awesome, yeah. It's beautiful. There's a beautiful piano in there. Oh, he's an incredible player. But e everything about that song with the sound effects and, and the, you know, the helicopter and the going around the stereo spectrum, I, I love it. The, the, the one thing I remember most was we started we started with Sophie and we were in there with it and we had the, the issues with the drums at the start but I, I'll never forget that, like he's, he's trying to get the um, he's trying to get the sound and we, and we just weren't getting what we needed and I went in there and I said look mate we need it to sound like bombs it has to it has, there has to be bombs that's what that's what the song's about it's got to be bombs and um, and that was all I had to say. I, I, I showed him a couple of little things on the drums and he just went out and he just Those nailed toms it. of the he bombs just, dropping. And he just but, nailed mm. it. And, fr and from there, it, it, it then become what it is, is now. And then obviously everyone just added their little bits. But what about the kids? David, yeah. oh, conducting the dude, kids. Conducting with 18 kids? <laughs> yeah, 18. That was epic. Yeah. And um, my nieces and nephew were part of it. It was really cool. Dev and Carter and Edison. Yeah. And um, that was really cool to share that with them because they never seen anything like this, you know. Mm. So that was pretty rad, and they um, they all got it. It was I was um, I was interested how we had the cause we had it playing back through the monitor, remember? And then I was worried that it was going to spill through the mic and standing yeah. there with these 18 kids and all their mums and dads, they eh? like <laughs> I just had to block them out like they weren't even there, and I'm waving my arms around and stomping my feet. <laughs> I always looked at, I mean, Danny, um, 
one of my first albums I ever got when I was eight years old was Pink Floyd The Wall and I think of We Don't Need No Education and the kids singing and that's how I always envisioned Vision that sounding. Yeah, Tony, Tony. What about Carl? You can't go past Carl. What about a, a, uh, so Carl, Carl Hogan from the from the Glocks, who who was our old lead singer. Now he knows the song like the back of his hand because he'd sung it for many years. And um, <laughs> he rocks up and and like we're doing the guide, we're doing the guides, and we said, uh, Carl, you know, you just get into it, mate, like you normally do. And and for Carl. Uh, the shirt comes off. He's he's he's, he was he's, there he's in the control on. room looking yeah. at him going. There's no conditioning, bro. And there's no ladies to impress here. <laughs> yeah. so okay. And Carl's on the album. He 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 sings his bits. Uh, he he does the, the bits. He's the sergeant major. Sergeant major. Sergeant sergeant he major he does the bit through the bridge, and that was actually the bit that Brilliant. we kept was actually from the uh, from the guide track. Honey. So we went and uh, originally we thought this was going to be a girl song. We found Karina West, outstanding voice, fitted the song like no other. Absolute powerhouse, didn't, even, didn't use any of her power at all. And you could just hear that she's got so much horsepower that was untapped into this awesome. Exactly. Oh, it reminded me so much of Christine Aguilera. She's just had this, that voice that is just, you know, she was and she didn't even, wasn't even trying, it was just leaping out of the speakers. But then, but then it took on that, that, that different vibe, and then because it was going to be, well, basically the whole song was going to be purely Karina, and then Anthony goes and throws in his vocals, and uh, it's basically what, what we said to him was, um, have a go and see if you can fit in anywhere, So because we wanted to try and keep him in there, we were going to keep him in the bridge. And put, and put him in the bridge and sing alongside her and, or maybe do some backup. But he just goes and nails it. When I look at you, this may say that you're my blue. I love that lead guitar in there. Yeah, yeah. That lead guitar was another thing that happened. That wasn't there. You know, it was just this upbeat rhythm. Yeah. And then Johnny comes in with that guitar lead. Stacey for her 30th birthday. Yeah. Yeah. It's a love song, kind of got a country the, feel. <laughs> the funniest thing is, is I actually sung it to her in front of people <laughs> for her 30th birthday. Uh, it takes I'm not guts. a singer, I can't sing. I, I, I can play the guitar okay, but uh, yeah. But I wrote it and I sang it and uh, everyone liked it. And, uh, she would have been taken. Yeah, and ended up, yeah, I got, I got it recorded in Nashville. Uh, not long after that, and um, yeah, the song did did quite well. But it's it's a different flavour now. We've a, we've added so much more dynamic. Well, it's the first song when I heard it. I just thought, no, Andrew Ishii's keys on this is just going to be incredible. That's right. So that's when the first time I, I mentioned him to you and played you some other stuff, and yeah. and that really feature in that song, and it's just beautiful. It's like real simplistic stuff too. It's not like overbearing in any way. Mm. And then managed to slot a bit of the old rock guitar there. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. to bring it home. Just, yeah. The keys are just tasty, eh? It's yeah. a tasty, tasty key. Oh, yeah. Just to admit, it's, 
it still amazes me like where all these songs started. So what they sound like now I just So songs like uh, You and Me Girl sort of definitely had a, a Barnes, a Jimmy Barnesy kind of vibe to them and I, I kind of went with that sort of style. Pretty much like all the songs on the album, it started with Rob's acoustic guitar and he had some, a really nice riff there. And um, yeah, we just built it up from there. John takes it, takes it to another level. It certainly he just does. Rocks, it, rocks in his solo. I think we've got about eight or nine solos, but and they're all good. It was really hard to choose which one to use. You That's know. right. Yeah. I think we got it. I'm pretty sure we got it. We got it. Right. Um, uh, but to me, it was roots rock, American roots rock, or something. Or even I was thinking of Jimmy Page. These initial guys that made me want to to play. To ride with me, so what happened was two mates of mine around similar times bought Harley, and, uh, and it was pretty cool. And, and I was in, in sort of in the phase of writing songs at that time, and um, I thought, hey, I, I want to write a song about these guys riding their bikes. So, uh, or what would yeah, or what? How could I write a song about the bikes but not being cheesy? You know? It's got it's got to have a little bit of flavour. So. When I started writing it, I come up with these couple of little licks and, and, and it sounded like Dust Till Dawn. And uh, it was actually funny, David, because you remember it, because this was one of the songs I played to you when, we, when, we first, when you first come over and we, were, and we were talking about it. And then you went in this Dust Till Dawn sort of, um, those nice little things you were doing, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think I um, brought the wah wah together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're just going away on these little tangents, and then, uh, and then I remember when when John comes in and we see dust at the door. Well, you, you just mentioned anything to John, and he just takes it to where it's got to go. And you've got to admit, the cool thing about Johnny, eh? like any particular style that we asked on the spot in the room, he could just. Do yep, it. and there's so many different styles on this record, so it was great to see him in all those different lights. You know, there's just so many, there's kind of punk, there's blues, there's rock, there's country. It's all there. See, with an eclectic project, um, often the thread of the singer will really, if they sing a certain way, it'll give it that thread. I think the way that Rob writes the songs will definitely be 
the thread on this project. I really like the fact that they all had their own character. There wasn't uh, that similarity, like the same, the same song sort of being regurgitated throughout the 10, ten tracks. Painting this picture, creating this story about, you know, like the devil or the beast or, you know, like um, something sort of mystic and e evil, but sort of um, kind of, what would you say, alluring as well. Alluring, yeah. yeah good word. Who was expecting vampire? And then, and, but yeah, and, and Karina, again, Karina and uh, Ants just nail it with the vocals. And they, they just work so good together. They just sound so good. Yeah, well, when you got a voice as powerful as Ants, you needed a female voice just as powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that would, that would work great together. Absolutely. Take your time now, honey. I remember from the start of you playing this song and I would pick up a harmonica and start jamming and, and you wanted me to do some harp and I'm like, man, I, just a few days ago we had Midge Marsden on, on our TV show. I'm um, saying if there's going to be a harp on here, we might as well get Midge to do it. So it's always a, a bit of a test. It's always like, oh, I hope I'm going to do this okay. You know, I'm so used to doing my own stuff. But see, it, it, it's quite simple. No one's going to question what I'm doing and say, don't play that, don't play that, play this. So you get to, once you get to the studio, then it's, it's real. You hear the backing track, you hear the, the guide vocal, or whatever you're being played, and, and you listen to it. And having listened to it on the, on the rough track, now you're hearing it. Uh, a, a, a track that's almost finished, but now you have to put the colour in, and that's what I'm here for. You know, to put the colour in. So being sympathetic to the vocal is the first thing, and, uh, and I thought the vocal was really good. The song was really strong, and quite different. Had little pieces in it, and I thought, oh, I know what I think I could do there. So um, they were very open to, to playing anything. You know, Jesse said in the rock, you just play what you feel. You know, so you follow the melody. And don't get in. The, thing, the secret is don't get in, uh, uh, in front of the vocal, don't override it, don't override anything you think it, it's going to be in the perm, in the last one, don't, don't play over top of the guitar player, or, so it, less is more, so come back and find the holes where you think you can put a nice little sweetener in there, and that's basically what it is, putting little sweeteners in around the vocal but not interfering with it, so that's kind of exactly how I play. I'm doing it for someone else and hopefully you know and with technology now it's fantastic so I did one take then maybe two takes and, 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 and they both said yeah there's some really sweet stuff in there really nice little touches and then maybe make a few suggestions how about putting da 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 put that in there and that's what you want you want guidance you know it's not all up to me just to ad lib the whole damn thing and so that's the process and I, 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 I quite enjoyed it so and then of course now that I've heard the final product I think of, I could have done that better. Damn, I wish I'd put, oh, why didn't I put that there? Why? <laughs> you know, and I ring up and say, do you think I could come and do it again? You know? I wrote that song for my son. And I wrote it when he was, oh, not long after he was born, I think, I wrote the song. And uh, I used to sing it to him. And then to have someone, like Midge on it, doing his thing, and adding that, I mean, yeah. It gives it a real flavour, right? It just, it, it takes it, it takes it to somewhere where you can just, it doesn't matter where you are, right? If you're driving, if you're on a boat, if you're at the beach, you can sit there and just get lost.
in the middle of June when the stranger ruled in the town. He went straight to the saloon. I mean, the, um, the simple without um, making a sound. The simplicity of adding well, a shaker, a tambourine. It's all these simple instruments that really brought the song down. The standout, kind of crazy, out of the box one was the, the Stranger, which I is this fantastic song, country song, which is the kind of the red herring in the lot. But I think it's just such a such a cool song, and I sort of I was kind of channeling some um, Waylon Jennings or something. Um, it doesn't even sound like me to be honest. I don't know where it came from, but. Um, it's there, and uh, it's, I think it's a fantastic song. I sort of was envisioning all these dancing girls in the, in the bar, and that's why I needed that sort of... The dresses and the yeah. corsets, and they're all coming off. That's so why I needed the female backing vocals. So I said, I, I, said to, I said to Jesse, I said, hey, we need a, we need a female. Uh, we'd obviously we already had uh, Karina West on the album. And Jesse says, I've got the, I know exactly who you need. She's great and at harmonies, and that, it sounds like five or six different yeah. girls there. She, did so, she just does so many amazing harmonies, so quick. Yeah. Like Caroline, she's in, and uh, so she's, she's from Switzerland, and, and she just, yeah, she just nailed it. And then she she's does a that Swiss little bit pop of, star. Yeah, and, and does that little bit of uh, improv at the end, and, and just, just makes it come alive. The song was actually written about Billy the Kid's father who rolls into this town and he's a, he's a gunslinger and he rolls into this town they're having this problem with the Dalton brothers. The Dalton brothers are, are, are running the town and, and the, whole, the whole town are sick of him. And, and this guy, Billy the Kid's father, rolls in, no one knows who he is. He walks into the saloon, has an issue with the Dalton brothers, goes out and shoots all six of them and, uh, and then rides out of town. No one still knows who he is. When the song finishes, you understand what's happened and everything, and, and you can understand, because she is basically the, the life of the party. She's starting the party at the end of the song. Hey, they, they, celebrate. They've been, yeah, they've been putting up with these Dalton brothers all these all these years, and, and all of a sudden, they're, yeah, they're free of the Dalton brothers, and she's the party. <laughs> she's starting the party. Ten years on or thereabouts, he was heard repeating the same. I got six shots in the pistol. The only reason you build recording studios is to make music. You don't build studios to make money. Um, it's, I mean, some money is good, but really um, making music is what building studios is all about. And I made a, a pact when I started, you know, probably 20 odd years ago when I built my first studio, that um, I'd only do stuff that I loved, you know. I mean, you, especially an album project. You, I only work with people I know, like and trust and actually like the music or love the music. Because if you get immersed in an album and you don't like the music, it's soul destroying. So um, we had a lot of fun on this record. and. Um, you know, it starts with great songs and great musicians. Rob's a great organiser of people and got some really amazing people in. There's definitely an Americana thread. And from what I've heard from people that listened back to me uh, to the record already and gave me the report back on it, said, you know, there is a strong American Americana thread. And I think that's a, that's a cool thing. That's cool, you know. It's obviously got his uh, Kiwiisms in there and the, the Americans will pick that up probably, which isn't a bad thing because anything again that we get wrong in a Kiwi way they see as slightly original. This album's been a labour of love, time and dedication. Uh, it's taken well over two years to create. Uh, so to Davey, Jesse and especially Rob, um, I have to take my hat off to you guys for staying the course and uh, writing a, and producing a really good rock album, which are, in this day and age is hard to find. I think the, the, the days of, of just good, solid, hard, classic rock seem to have disappeared. And I think this album uh, encapsulates that. I've got so much respect for Rob, you know. Like he's one of those people that you meet in life. He's a doer. He's not sitting around thinking about it. He's making it happen. And he's decided that he wants, wants to do a record, you know, and he's pulled all these people together. And I've met some fantastic people. We've had some 
fantastic jams, there's been some fantastic moments, there's been some crushing moments. Um, I couldn't think of any, anyone better to work with, it's just so easy. And all the people here were so easy, there was no egos involved at all. Everyone was very realistic about what they were and weren't capable of, so everyone put themselves in the right position, I reckon, I believe, for this record. Um, from a production point of view, it's night and day. It really is. From where this project started, listening to a few chords in Rob's kitchen, I'm on an acoustic guitar, to where it is now, is it's just absolute polar opposite of where it started. And it's cool to be a part of that. It's really cool to be a part of it. Well, I'd only met Rob uh, on the day of the studio, and because Jesse was a bit scant on detail, just saying that Rob Vase is doing an album. Could you come and play? Yes, yeah, sure, I'd come and play a track on that. It'd be great. But it wasn't till you know it, it's unfolded to me that Rob um, isn't really playing much on it. It's his album, his songs that come from his head, and he's he's brought around a team of people that he's he's gathered around him to 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 interpret the ideas in his head onto this album. So it's quite an unusual situation like that. Generally the main man is the man that's leading the charge, singing all the songs. But I quite like the idea that he's got cooperation and input from other musicians who all bring their something to the table. So that's, that's, it's a very unusual situation how he's gone from there to the finished product, you know. But I, I wish him all the best. I think it's, it's a great idea. And, uh, and uh, in fact, um, there's probably people out there that do that sort of thing, but they auto-tune. <laughs> and Rob doesn't auto-tune, you know, but, so that's cool. But um, you know, I think that it's worked really, really well from the little bits and pieces you've played me today. Fantastic. It's really, it's really, really good. When we started this album, we had no idea. We had no idea who the musicians were going to be. We had no idea what the sounds were going to be. We just jumped in the studio and started recording. As we, as we carried on through, we started bringing different people um, that, that contributed in different ways. Some people brought uh, some happy vibes, some people brought some soul, some people brought... It, it was an amazing journey that brought all these different sounds and all these different people from around the globe. And I feel the Vasey Collective name speaks for what's happened. We've, we've, we've put the word out, we've brought all these people in that had no idea when we started in the recording studio, they had no idea they were going to be part of this journey. And now we've, we've created something that I feel is special, I think will touch people in some way or another. Um, the songs tell stories, some of the songs tell stories uh, that really happen. And uh, I think people will, will, when they listen to the, to the music, I'm sure people will understand what the songs are about. And they may reflect on them and, and it may touch them in a way that, that makes it special for them. And that's, as a musician and as a songwriter, that's what music's about. It's not about what it was written about, but it's whether the journey will take them somewhere that is special for them. And all these musicians that have been on the album and everyone that's contributed to this album, I can only, th you know, I can't thank them enough for, for taking my music to where it's become. It's been a hell of a journey. Mm -hmm.